I have to say, and, and it would be absurd to me if I lost my relationship with my boyfriend over politics. I think that would be absurd. Yet, it's come close. It's come close at times. Certainly the summer of 2018 when everything looked like it was blowing up and the Kavanaugh hearings were happening. And we were on separate sides of the aisle. I thought the Kavanaugh hearings were a joke, a complete yeah, joke. Complete. He thought she was a hero, a heroine, a heroine. That I thought was insane. So since you told me that no, nothing's off topic and you already brought yeah. him up, so you mentioned, so you're, you're part, you say partner. I said partner, you yeah. You say partner, that always reminds me. My boyfriend. Better, boyfriend, but partner always seems like you're playing tennis together. He was a boyfriend for or two years. you're playing year. golf or something. Or he was a boyfriend, was boyfriend for, oh. for two years and now it's been going on 11, he's a partner now. Yeah. So, <laughs> he, he moved into partner. All right, he's partner, fair enough. So, um, he's not my husband. So he's a Bernie guy and, obvious, a Bernie guy, and yeah. obviously you're not. And I think that's super interesting. We, we had dinner one night, the four of us, and I think yes, it's super did. interesting because I get a lot of email from people that are breaking up over this kind of stuff. Right. I'm talking about marriages. I have had people email me right. that they have had divorces or are in the midst of a divorce because of this, yet you guys can somehow Absurd. work past that. I think, look, because politics are not the be all end all, even though many people might feel that way in, in this crazy environment and atmosphere that we're living in, I won't allow it. I simply won't allow it. And I don't think he will allow it either. I mean, in term, because we like each other more than that. Right, but is that generally easier for, from, do you think, someone coming from your perspective than usually the leftist perspective? We, oh. don't have to, we don't have to make this about your boyfriend specifically, your partner. But you know what I mean? Like, I find people that are coming from it from a more as, oh, politics isn't everything perspective can let a lot of stuff go versus oh, yeah. a lot of lefties. They think politics is everything, right? right. They, they, they believe that this thing is everything. Look. I am of that, of that, of that demo. Yeah. I will not let politics destroy a relationship, and I will not let it destroy a friendship at all. I had dinner last night with three friends who are on the right, who are conservative. I'm having dinner tomorrow night with three friends who are Democrat and heavily SoCal liberals. I move through both worlds, and I will never define a friend or not have a friend based on what their politics are. I simply won't do it. I won't disinvite someone to be, uh, based on their politics. It's absurd. Though, of course, this has happened, and it's happened to me through this book and through my podcast, even though I am not a vocal Trump supporter, and I, what I do is I, I've been criticizing the media, and I've been criticizing people who've been losing their minds over Trump. That gets you disinvited from yeah. a lot of stuff. So that, that To be clear, you, did, you mean you talk about this in the book. You didn't even vote for Trump. Like, no, I didn't it's vote for right, Trump. But so much of the book is enough. related to it's this. It's not so, enough. Yeah, it's not enough. You have yeah. to claw your face off. You yeah. have to claw your face off. But anyway, I have to say, and, and it would be absurd to me if I lost my relationship with my boyfriend over politics. I think that would be absurd. Yet, it's come close. It's come close at times. Certainly the summer of 2018 when everything looked like it was blowing up and the Kavanaugh hearings were happening. And we were on separate sides of the aisle. I thought the Kavanaugh hearings were a joke. A complete yeah, joke. Complete. He thought she was a hero, a heroine. A heroine. That, I thought was insane. I thought it was absolutely insane. And so we did get to a couple of, you know, whisper screaming arguments in, in pavilions or whatever. <laughs> you know, it was just nuts. And yeah. I, was, I could barely drive the car because we were screaming at each other right, over right. this. And I couldn't believe how fast it would come on. It wasn't a slow burn. It would, come, it would go one to hundred in yeah. like five seconds. And you're screaming at each other over this. You cannot believe how one person sees. At the, at the same time, you know, you take a deep breath and you realize, what is this about? What is this about? And I and I will say I am the more mature one. I don't say anything anymore. I just keep it closed. I mean, you'll he suck was, it up and say you're the more mature. He one. was That's saying good. some things about Bernie and about Trump that just like, oh well, maybe you know. So I am. Um, I'm. Uh, but I can't imagine uh, letting politics define not only my love life or my friendships. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So all the people that when they've gone crazy, one of the guys who helped frame some of this for me. Do you know Michael Malice by any chance? I don't know if I do. He's, a, he's an interesting guy you'd like a lot. He's a, he's really sort of a, he's even a, he's not even a libertarian. He's more of like an ANCAP, you know, no government. He likes, mm -hmm. he likes kind right. of chaos. I, I call him the Willy Wonka of politics. He's just kind of out there. Right. Really, really interesting thinker. 
but he loves the tumult that we're in right now. Uh -huh. Where I think my default is a little more, if everyone could just calm down. Yeah, right? that's I what think mine things is would too. be a little bit better. Oh, yeah. but, I, but I would imagine though also as a writer and generally as a creative person, it's like you kind of have to like it a little bit if you're gonna be able to get anything done, right? Like, I, if, like if you were hating this entire thing right now, do you think you, you could be creative through it? I actually do hate a lot of it. Yeah. I really do hate a lot of it. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and it's, not, it's not, again, the side that elected Trump that I hate. I really do hate what's become of the other side of the aisle. That's really my problem. And that's what makes me so sad and depresses me all the time is that uh, there is this complete absence of, of connection, of wanting to connect and wanting to stem this divide that's happening, wanting to mend, mend something. And I do think that the media is at fault, a huge part of it is at fault. I don't think Russian bots are there to blame for anything. The media must be blamed for really sowing these seeds of dis uh, uh, discord. And the fact that my friends on the left cannot speak to somebody often on the right is a problem. I think there was some poll taken where 92% of people on the right would have yeah. a liberal over, 8% of liberals would have a conservative over, whatever that is. I really do see that. I see that around LA and I see that around uh, the people that I know in New York. That, that actually makes me depressed. That is a depressing thing. It doesn't make me happy to be alive or to be a writer. Um, and a lot of what I'm writing right now really has nothing to do with any of this. I'm writing a novel that's set in 1980. I'm writing another novel that's based on an intellectual property. So I don't know if there's anything about this period that I necessarily want to write, write about. I do think that it is kind of a very depressing, stressful period to a degree. I'm a lot older, so I kind of let it go off, run off me. But, you know, there is stress floating around everywhere. Yeah. Are you surprised how it's worldwide now? That it feels it's not just, you know, little LA bubble, it's not just a little American thing, that it seems to be everywhere now? Well, look, I was surprised that this book uh, was being published in as many countries as it was because it's nonfiction and it seems to be specifically about the United States and what's been going on the last five or 10 years here, culturally, politically to a degree. But um, I did two tours of France for this book because they see the same thing kind of happening. Mm -hmm. uh, cancel culture is rearing its head, political correctness to an almost frightening degree. Um, and cultural appropriation is starting to also rear its head. Uh, the Me Too movement is being weaponized in ways that go against whatever its initial promise was when it began. And a lot of people were getting worried. Uh, certainly when I was tour touring uh, through Italy of all places, the same concerns. That all of the, these things that we're talking about here is kind of sweeping along Europe at least, uh, throughout Europe, and that uh, nationalism, for mm -hmm. another thing, is sweeping along Europe as well, which of course drives, you know, your average liberal quite insane and gets quite, quite upset. Yeah. Uh, but look, but but also, I mean, what is being recorded? I mean, what is being recorded or reported? I mean, you know, the uh, elections in Israel happened the last few days. You could hear a cricket in, yeah. if, about anything about Netanyahu. Right. I mean, anything. Right. And it seems, I mean, and the way the headlines were in the New York Times and the LA Times were, m might be, looks like it instead of like, you know, decisively saying that this has happened. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think we're in a very weird place in terms of how we're getting our information and how we're getting our information from everywhere. So like you're saying, yes, around the world, this, whatever this might be, yeah, it's happening. Do you think maybe we're starting to enter a time when we won't need institutions the way we needed them? So you mentioned the New York Times and CNN before, these things that of were course. pillars of that course. we all believed in and maybe that's part of why but younger I'm people are just like, eh, screw but all this. Yes, and it's all becoming niche. I'm seeing so much shit drop away from me. So much stuff that I used to believe in, that I used to watch, that I used to read, just dropping away from me because of really most of the time a kind of bias that I smell and I can't deal with. So I find a lot of that uh, just dropping away from me. So yes, you think there's a risk though, if, if they all crumble? Uh, uh, well, interesting, what's the risk? Well, the risk being that if all the institutions crumble, the things that sort of link us to something kind of mainstream, that the Overton window will be so blown away 
that we're just gonna have factions of people constantly warring over what is actually true because there will be no institutions that are able to Don't you think wrangle. That's I, I, you know, I do think that's happening, and I've started to come to believe that maybe that is the only alternative. But but I do think maybe for a democracy to work, you still need you some really, sort of function. You think having the New York Times being no, the I'm not gray la No, I'm just saying the gray lady of yeah, our yeah. country. Is really healthy? I don't. No, I don't either. I, I don't absolutely either. don't. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.